Manish Tiwari ji. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, one of the fundamental objectives of specially economic zones was to boost exports. As the Honorable Commerce Minister was pointing out, India has done uh, rather well over the past 10 months in, insofar as the export performance is concerned. But there are two looming challenges. The first is that as advanced economies you know, wind down their fiscal stimulus, the purchasing power in these advanced economies is going to be impacted. Number two, there is a, a, a problem because of COVID-19, which is that there has been a structural change in consumption patterns all across the world. The Honorable Minister was referring to you know, certain FTAs which are under negotiation. Now, some of these FTAs have been under negotiation for a very long time. The uh, Indo-EU FTA has been under negotiation since 2008. India walked out of SEPA for reasons which are best known to the government. My uh, limited question to the Honorable Commerce Minister is, given the fact that over the next two or three years, these are two challenges which are looming on the horizon. Number one, a contraction in purchasing power as a consequence of withdrawal of the fiscal stimulus. Number two, the change in consumption patterns as a consequence of COVID-19. Does the government have any strategy to deal with these two challenges? Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I must appreciate the Honorable MP for having raised a very futuristic uh, scenario about which the whole world is uh, today grappling and concerned. However, there is a silver lining to this. The geopolitical shift that we have seen in the post-COVID world, also the geopolitical situation that's emerging vis-a-vis -vis certain countries, which were erstwhile very large exporters or producers of manufactured goods, lends itself to a big opportunity for India to capture newer markets, newer products going from India. And it is with that intention that, if you will observe, uh, the Honorable Finance Minister yesterday alluded to this when she spoke about uh, changing global supply chains, patterns of procurement. Today in the morning, the Honorable Prime Minister also spoke about the post-COVID world being entirely different from what we have known the world to be in the past. And it is a time for India to grab these opportunities. Therefore, the PLI schemes could not have come at a more opportune moment. What we are trying to do in that is create global champions, get economies of scale into India, and make India the preferred supplier as an alternate to certain geographies with which many countries do not wish to transact business. Incidentally, India did not walk out of the SEPA discussions with EU. They were started in 2008, but around 12 or 13, they gave up on the discussions because they found that they were not getting anywhere, and the discussions were stalled, started getting stalled around 12, 13, and in a year or two, the discussions almost came to an end. It is because of the relentless pursuit with the European Union in terms of uh, diplomatic engagement that the government was able to once again relaunch the negotiations with EU as recently as July 2021, when in, in the Portugal presidency, they accepted to uh, do, a, uh, do an FTA with India. Incidentally, post-Brexit, the discussions with UK is completely new. In terms of uh, RCEP, if at all you were trying to recall RCEP, India walking out of RCEP, I think every member in this house and everybody in the whole country, every industry association, every export organization, every MSME organization, everybody with one voice has thanked the Honorable Prime Minister for not subjecting Indian industry to unfair uh, trade, unfair competition from a geography which does not have transparent economic policies. Maybe some parties or some Leaders have a great affinity for some country. But the reality is, we already had an FTA with Korea, Japan, and the ASEAN bloc of 10 countries. With Australia, we are, already, we are now negotiating, and we are at an advanced stage. New Zealand, we have very little interest. So effectively, RCEP 
would have landed up becoming an FTA with one country. And certainly, the practices that that country follows in trade do not lend themselves to opening India's uh, borders to lower uh, tariff trade or giving them greater market access. And I think that was one decision which was very well considered. In fact, I'm amazed why we got into the RCEP negotiations at all in 2012 in the first place. But I am grateful to the Prime Minister on behalf of the entire Indian industry, farmers, our dairy sector, our MSME, that we did not pursue the RCEP story any further.